News just in, brand new, limited edition Land Rover Defender watch. (laughs) Yes! Only from Russia, with love, in a sense. This is therefore the anatomy of a ridiculous, hilarious, scientifically illiterate marketing own goal. Like, dude, what's Russia ever done wrong? I'm John Cadogan from AutoExpert.com.au and I get new cars. <laughs> Even Land Rovers do, like, hey. You want to do that to yourself, then who am I to stand in your way? Free country and all of that, but Australia only. Website. Card. Now, occasionally I read a amusing press release and have a little intermittent, uh, let's call it, uh, leakage, you know, the waterworks, but rarely have I read an export grade release of this calibre that results in the complete evacuation of one's bladder, uncommanded. So, fair warning, dude, just whip out to the linen press and grab yourself a stack of towels about, I don't know, half a zucchini high or so, just for the sake of the next dude who might occupy your chair, if you know what I mean. This is pretty good. (sighs) Without further ado... It's got to be bullshit press release of the week, too. I know Tuesday's a bit early to call it, but hey. Bamford, London and Land Rover have harnessed their shared commitment, that harnessing of shared commitment. I typically reserve that for special occasions, you know, birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, things of that nature. Jim's dominatrix helps me out there. Hashtag not sponsored. They've harnessed their shared commitment to design and precision to create the limited edition LR001 watch. Licence to kill. Fantastic. Tell me more, dude. And You might want to press pause and just whip over and, you know, grab some lube to avoid nasty chafing. There's going to be a lot of, you know, simple harmonic motion with this one. They go on. Like the incomparable SUV that inspired it, the LR001 is a creative endeavour for adventurous hearts. Might need a little bit more lube than that, dude, just saying. Designed by the team at Land Rover and built by Bamford London, just 100 timepieces are available worldwide. So, a pretty niche product then. Thank God for small mercies, hey? What was second prize? 200? Reflecting the Defender design language. <coughs> it's called styling. Design's not a language. The LR001 combines restrained surfaces and inherent capability. That's what I see when I... Look in the mirror. Restrained surfaces and inherent capability. I think we all do. We're all the hero in our own movies, are we not? (sighs) However, I'd suggest that to reflect the Defender's truly inherent character, I do hope it keeps time rather poorly. And not always in a constant way, like a bit fast here and then really, really slow, but never bang on time. And it would have to break down um, twice a week, would it not? And then, were you to attempt to change the band, would it not have to suffer catastrophic failure of the movement just to be authentically Land Rover? I think it would. And I'm only saying that with half a tongue in the cheek because of the... The Fast Lane, you know, TFL Studios, YouTube channel there, Murricon, and they had a fairly distinctive experience with the new Defender when it first came out. I think they uh, were on their third one before too long because the first two just went poopy, you know. And then they wanted sort of the base model to do adventuring and then they took it to the dealer. This is number three, right? And they said, please, my good man, would you mind fitting a bull bar? And they went, uh uh-huh, uh uh-huh, uh-huh. And some genius technician managed to nick the wiring harness in the process of fitting this bull bar, rendering the entire vehicle a throwaway. I'm not kidding. They just binned it. So not exactly a victory for sustainability there, I'd suggest. Anyway, you check it out. It's all on the record. Built to last with a 40mm titanium case, so 
It's a bit Mr. Puniverse for a real defender-owning man's watch, is it not? And a premium Celita SW200-1B automatic movement. I got NFI what that is. With, I know it's an automatic watch movement, but is it good or bad? It's probably good-ish. With a refined ruthenium anthracite finish. Now, who hasn't wanted one of them? However, pro tip, just mark that, will you? Ruthenium, just make a bookmark. Ruthenium, okay? A ruthenium anthracite finish. It embodies sustainability through longevity. <laughs> Ruthenium anthracite, okay? It's a poor choice, you Land Rover Cox. I've just got to say, it is. On the metallurgy front, it's not a bad option, okay? But when it comes to the marketing optics, just poor. Substantially poor. We get into that. Ruthenium, okay? It's an inert metal, not unlike platinum. You probably haven't heard of it. It's not very common. I think they only mine about... 35 tonnes a year, and it's often found in the same ore deposits as platinum. So they're pretty simple, and you might think, what's wrong with that, okay? So, ruthenium was discovered way back in 1844. That was before the internet. We had dinosaurs then with saddles because that's how we got around, obviously. This is before internal combustion, before they turned to juice in other words. Discovered in 1844 by a dead Baltic German-Russian brainiac named Karl Ernst Klaus. Sort of a distant relative of Santa Klaus, you know, like a third cousin, once removed on the, on the woman's side sort of thing. Anyway, ruthenium. We're getting to this point, okay? Ruthenium is atomic number 44. It's an inert metal. It's got the plot next to rhodium on the periodic table of elements, okay? And it's got the chemical symbol RU. And dead brainiac Klaus Bro actually named it ruthenium and gave it that symbol, uh, that symbol RU, big R, little U, in honour of Russia, <laughs> Okay, to commemorate Russia, to glorify the friggin' motherland, Das Vidanya, baby, is what I'm saying. This is a historic fact, okay? Way to kick a PR own goal, Land Rover and exclusive London jeweler. Like Jesus, you scientifically illiterate marketing masturbate whores, I'd suggest. And perhaps, I don't know, like. I'm just speculating here, right at the moment, associating one's new limited edition, brand new wanking chariot watch with Russia, with the one element that glorifies Russia. There's only one in the whole periodic table glorifying Russia, and they've chosen this one. Do you see that it might be a suboptimal choice in the context of current global events? Like, just saying. How does this look? Why would you put it front and centre in a press release? You'd have to not know. You'd have to be asleep during science not to know, wouldn't you? I'm pretty sure they didn't focus group the shit out of that aspect of the whole thing. Just saying, dude. And the big question, of course, was there a worse element that they could have coated this watch in that's not plutonium-239 sort of thing? Perhaps we'll never know. But the release gets... Well, maybe not better, but it continues this theme of <coughs> poor trigger discipline downstairs. Four resilient bio-based 18mm straps are available in black, navy, light tan and dark tan. <laughs> Each one is a sustainable alternative to traditional leather. I'd have to say that leather is a byproduct of food production, right? That's just how this works. If you're a virtue signaling dick, maybe leather is not a desirable product, but I'd suggest that not using leather is, at least in my view, it's entirely disrespectful to the animal that gave its life to feed us. Not to mention, if we do this on a widespread basis, it's an environmental catastrophe. So there's that. They go on and they say the black, light tan and dark tan options are created from corn-derived sustainable polyurethane leather. Who doesn't want a premium watch with corn-derived plastic as a substitute for leather? And P.S. Dear assholes, 
It can't be leather unless it's made of dead animals, surely. Like, that's what leather is. Plant-based protein is not meat, in other news, and alcohol-free wine is not wine, just saying. They go on. While the navy option is made of Cordoba, a woven recycled nylon coated to be hydrophobic and durable. This watch, therefore, is the complete package, is it not? It's a $3,000 vegan wank watch wrapped in fake leather and encased in the world's only pro-Russian metal. I love it. I might buy two, and perhaps I could put you down for a couple too. Fuck's sake. Now... Final word here from Professor Jerry McGovern, OBE, the Chief Creative Officer of Jaguar Land Rover, who said, well, let's just back up a minute. I've met Prof G. He's not a bad bloke. I met him you know, more than a couple of decades ago, and that was before he was such a big wig. He was a rising star of design at that stage. He came to Australia. And uh, I'm just wondering if that is not the best job in the world, Chief Creative Officer of Jaguar Land Rover. That would, gee, that would be the perfect vocation, would it not? You just kind of get a, a bucket of Verve Clicquot for morning tea and then just the rest of the day would unfold, would it not? Anyway, he said, created with intrinsic longevity and encompassing defender's reductive character. <laughs> Meaning you drive at 10Ks and it reduces itself to an unreliable bucket of shit. The LR001 has a compelling design which is precisely executed though it's refined and crafted form. In other news, proofreading is apparently dead, whereas marketing masturbation is alive and well, and I do wonder what Charles Darwin would have to say about that. Perhaps we're evolving into a higher calibre of bullshitter. What do you think? It's also, in my estimation, 25 words that means essentially nothing. Like, show me a mechanical watch without precision execution. Show me a metal and fake plastic device that's been manufactured and lacks crafted form. Like, come on. Anyway, on this one I'd have to say, Spasiba for the laughs, Prof G and Bamford, Dobroy Nochi, Otlichnaya Rabota. Dudes. I'm pretty sure my uh, trousers are going to clean up just fine in due course. Overall, I'd say it was well worth the momentary incontinence. Laughter is, of course, the best medicine, is it not? The LR001 watch, right, if you're still interested, because I'm sure it's uh, kind of anti-kudos status symbol by, by virtue of its Russian links. It's available directly from Banford, London, with a UK recommended price of 1,350 Great British Pounds, which is about, I don't know, 40 or 50,000 Schittsvillian micro pesos, based on the price of a cup of coffee in London, Australian dollars. Visit all the dubs, BamfordLondon.com. Or don't, dude, just, I don't know, on principle.